okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's review where we left off. Again, um, we have the basic animal. This doesn't really do anything. All you do is when you click the button, it goes to the main Swift 2 full, yeah, this page. In this page, we have four different answers, or questions, I meant. You have a single question, which is the buttons. You have a multiple question, which is the switches. Then you have a slider for a range question. So you have that kind of thing. So most of the programming is going to be in this option right here, in this. And, of course, this one's called the quiz, right? The question. It was called the question um, one. Then, of course, over here is the, the results one. And um, it'll tell them what kind of animal they are or dragon. Or you can actually, you know, may, maybe think about it as a, a as a trivia game for a specific uh, 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 movie or Marvel. Maybe you can have Marvel. Uh, how about that? You can have which Marvel character are you? I'm pointing at you, Jennifer. I don't know. You can do Marvel characters. What else could you do? Maybe it would be fun. Which Game of Thrones character, or which one got killed first, or which one should be killed next? How about that one? Game of Thrones killer. Who's going to be killed? Who's going to end up on the Iron Throne? How about that? All of them? They'll all be together? Which Marvel comic? Oh, we said Marvel. How about DC comic? Which DC comic are you? Batman. Shazam? I don't know. Think about it and try and make your own version after we do this, okay? That's what That would be fun. Okay. Let's continue then. Um... Uh, let's continue where we at. We did this. We put all our labels on. We put the slider on. We're going to start here on page 417. So far in the lesson, you've learned the view controllers and storyboard. You've got the three UI view controller subclasses ready for each of some code. Now it's time to create a structure that holds the question data and updates the user interface based on the values of each question. Once the data has been laid out, you can update the user interface and so on. First, uh, we're going to start by creating a Swift file. Okay, and if you remember, this is not the, the UI file, it's a Swift file. So, to make that Swift file, uh, let me kind of hide. Oh, no, let's leave that open because we're going to put it in here. To make the Swift file, I'm going to go underneath File, New, File, File, New, File. And in not the Cocoa Touch, we're going to do a Swift file. That'll hold the logic of the game for you, just like we did with the... Um, the uh, other trivia game or whatever, the hangman game. Then you say next, you give it a name. Uh, what do they say to call it? Data, question data, question data. Question data, like that. Again, put it in the same folder with the rest of the Swift files and hit create and you'll be ready to start programming. Okay, so again, it's a Swift file. It's not the, the UI file. Hold on, let me close this. Let me move this around. Okay, so after you've made that, um, <coughs> it's safe to assume that every question will have text to represent the question itself, along with an array of answer objects. Since your question can use three different types of input methods, you'll create an enum that describes the question response type. Single answer, multiple answer, range response. An example of the structure is shown below. So if you think about it, what was the enum used for? Do you remember the example north, south, east, and west? From the enum chapter. Let's go back. If you remember, the enum is used for um, enumeration. enumeration, exactly, that's the term used. It, it's basically a way of not having to do a bunch of if statements, right? If, if you think about it, if you're painting north, then do this. If you're, painting, if, you're, if you're facing south, do that. If you're facing east, do that. But you don't need to say if north, if south, east, if south, whatever, you know what I'm saying. You could just specify. Oh. North, do this. South, do that. Without having to do if, then, else, if, then, else. Does that make sense? It's just a way of kind of saying, you know, 
That's what an enum is. So in this case, are you doing the single question? Then do this. Are you doing the multiple questions? Then do that. Are you doing the range? Then do that. OK, so let's write it. You can kind of follow with, um, with the, the, the example in the book. Again, they start with a struct question. So the question could have, of course, uh, the text, which is a string. Each question, of course, would have a response as well. And then, of course, you have an array of answers, right? Because you need to store what they've chosen, right? Don't they, don't they choose something? They have to choose it, and then you have to store it. And then based upon what they've chosen, you will then give them the animal that they are by based upon what they've chosen. So we need to um, um, And of course, we haven't defined those yet, so it's going to give you error messages. So again, each one, oh, single spelled wrong. Oh, no, single? That's how you, oh, no, no, the N is in front. I did that last time. You know that. So again, if you look at the enum here, you got one called response type. That response type could either be the single question, the multiple question, or the ranged question. So every answer corresponds to a result type. In the animal example, suppose you ask which of the foods you like do you like the most? The possible answers are steak, fish, carrots, and corn. Each response corresponds to a dog, cat, rabbit, or turtles, respectively, and therefore a particular emoji. If the answer property was an array of strings, there wouldn't be a simple way to associate the answer with a particular result. Instead, the an answer struct will have a string to display the player and the type property that ties the answer to a specific results. Here's an example of the data. The struct, of course, answer can have a string and an animal type. And of course, the an animal type will be an emoji. You got your dog, your rabbit, your cat, your turtle. Um, so again, we're going to make an, uh, a struct. Make sure you spell it the same way you spelled it here. And then uh, you got a variable which is a text. Again, a string, depending on the words that they chose or whatever um, animal type they are. It's a variable. Then, of course, just like we did before, uh, and I don't know if this character, remember they didn't use the word character in the um, in the other example, remember in the game? But they're using it again here.
So again, uh, we have case dog equals, uh, what, what emojis did we use? Do you remember I had a dragon? I used, let me see. Oh, here they are. I had a dragon. So let me, oh, here they are. Let me start with a bear. So we got bear, bear, um, I have bear, I have, um, where were they? Turtle, well, here he is, rabbit. Rabbit. Then we had a dragon. Dragon. And then we had, what was the last one? Turtle. Can't forget the turtle. So we had our four emojis. Okay, so we have animal type. So if we look at what we have here, so you have a question. A question is going to have a string and then a response. Then, of course, what is their answers need to be stored somewhere. So if you looked on the answer, the answer has a string and an animal type that corresponds with it. Typically, at the end of a personality quiz, the player receives some text about the outcome of the quiz. Since you've already defined an enum to represent each personality type, or in this case, animal type, you can include a definition property that will be presented as a label on the results screen. Here's a definition for the animal type. So depending upon which one they that which animal they are, it's going to come up with. Um, if you're a dog, you're this. If you're a cat, you're that, and so on. And then this will be displayed on the screen. Of course, I don't use dog, cat. I use bear, rabbit, dragon, and turtle. So, oh, I spelled turtle wrong, of course. Turtle. Make sure you spell it right. Dragon is spelled right. D-R-A-G-O-N. Is that how you spell dragon? Okay, so... Here we go. We need to um, type in this. I'm going to pause the uh, video. So again, I typed in uh, the <coughs> definition goes into the same area here. Next, uh, the question view controller will hold the array of question objects in the property called questions. As you create the objects, you'll need to take special care with how many answers objects you can place in the answers property. But when you build stack views for single and multiple answer responses, you create four buttons and four switches to represent a static number of possible answers. So any question you create with a type property that is set to single or multiple must have the exact four answer objects. For the range response, you can get away with two answers, the two ends of the slider, but it would be better to define four possible ranges so that the question can give points to each of the four outcomes. The collection of answers for a range response needs to be in some sort of order, from least likely to the most likely, for example, so that you can actually assign the answer to the result. In the example below, the array is filled with a question of each response type, single answer, multiple answer and range response okay so hopefully you got an idea basically you're doing four no matter what even if you're only storing one because the possibilities are four right again the question has four is what kind of they're saying there. And and I guess what they're trying to say is even if you're doing the slider, you might have 
four, even though the slider goes back and forth, right? The slider has an end and it has a beginning, but you know, you can have sub areas in between, I guess is what they're saying. So again, you can make a variable that's called questions. That is a question. And that has the question is a text, which food do you most like? That would be the text that's on the screen. Then of course they can only choose one answer, right? They can only choose one. They can choose either steak, fish, carrots, or corn. And it relates to an animal. Now of course we have different animals than they have there. I got a bear. So my bear might like berries, right? So you might need to change that a little bit. So let's let's make it here. Hold on. Let me scroll down a little bit. So this would go in, the, uh, I guess, the um, question view controller. So we don't want to be in here, I guess. The question view controller will hold the array of question objects in a property called question. So again, we need to go to the question view controller for this. So where do we get to that? Well, probably the easiest way to get that is you can actually click on it here. But if you wanted to see it, you could go to the storyboard. And then you can go to the Olympic symbol here. And... Uh, um, you bring up the question view controller here and then where do you, where would we put this I think that's where we would put it probably up here right after the view controller where we define variables <coughs> So let's put it up here. Questions with an S is a question. All right, I'm running out of space here. Which is equal to, of course, um, what do we have? Question. is text and then the first question is which food do you eat and of course we're not eating it's going to be a type and that's the single one. Make sure you spell it right. I spelled it wrong already. Single. I spell single. Single. M G L E. There we go. Type single. And then answers. And what answers could we have? We have what? We have uh, answer, which is a text. And that text would be, um, what is my first one? Uh, um, is a bear, right? Meat. Meat? Meat. Bears eat meat? How about berries? I want my bear to be nice. <laughs> berries. No? And that would be then type dog? Or no, type, what am I saying? Type bear. Bear. Okay. Then we have um, text, or oh, answer, I'm sorry. Well, we just copy and paste this. And then, uh, uh, what's berries? Uh, what's my next one? I can't remember my list. I had bear. What was my second one? Was it the rabbit? What do rabbits eat? 
Carrots? I guess so. Carrots? Care. Carrots. And that is rabbit. Okay. And then I have... My dragon was next, wasn't it? Dragons eat the meat. Dragon. And then... My last one was turtle, right? What do turtles eat? What do turtles eat? Fish? Grass? Anything. How about that? I'm going to say anything. What? Is that anything? Anything is one word. Okay. Okay, so let's see what we got here. <laughs> so I have... I have too many. Yes. No. It's not recognizing their rabbit. Dragon. Mm-hmm. Well, dragon, I think, was lowercase letters, right? A dot before them? Yes. Oh, there you go. No? Which one? I spelled text wrong. Incorrect argument label. What's that? Thank you. Okay, let's do another one. It's basically the same thing. So maybe you can copy and paste if you want. So again, you have another question.
So you can copy and paste this. And then this one says, which activity do you enjoy? And this could be, what do you like to do? And of course, um, what does a bear like to do? Sleep, that's a good one. And what, and what does a, what does a rabbit like to do? Run? How about running? Running. What does a uh, dragon like to do? Breathe fire. Breathe fire. I was going to say eat, eat, Dark. eat nights. How about eat nights? Eat nights. Nights. And then what does a turtle like to do? Swim. Swimming. Do I need a comma in between these? No. How do I give another question? Oh, this is multiple too. This is not single answer, this is multiple. Multiple. Okay, let's do one more. Oh. Why well, doesn't like question? What's that? It doesn't like question here. Uh, you forgot the comma. Where? Okay. Um, set chair. Here. Backspace one. And then add a comma. Oh, it's going down to this one. That's why. Yeah, I see that. Okay, last one. Uh, this one is going to be a slider, right? This is a ranged. Ranged. Ranged, R-A-N-G, did I spell it right? Ranged, there it is, ranged. And then we're going to have, uh, uh, what, what, kind of, what kind of question are we asking him? How much do you enjoy card ride? I don't like that question. So these are animals. What kind of question could we ask them? It's a range, they have to choose a range of something. How about, um, how, how wild are you? How wild? Oh, that's a good question. There you go. How wild, wild? No, wild are you? And of course, you're going from not wild at all, not wild, to very wild. So this one could be not wild. Somewhat. How about this one says somewhat crazy. This one could be What's it's not wild at all, somewhat wild, somewhat crazy. What's what's almost super nuts? Why would that be? Crazy, very crazy. No, you want crazy? Okay, crazy. Whoosh, very crazy. Okay. Turtles are very crazy. Very crazy, yes. What's wrong with a crazy turtle? <laughs> bears are not wild. They're in the zoo. Okay, see if you can get to that point. I'll pop. Okay, so now we have our answers. Basically, we need to uh, bind these to that as well. 
You need to display the questions with the right controls. Now that you have a list of questions to draw from, you'll need to keep track of which ones your app has already displayed and to calculate when you've displayed them all. One technique is to use an integer as an index into the questions collection. This integer will start at zero, the index of the first element in a collection. And you'll in increment by one value after the player answers each question. So again, we need some, some way to keep track of where they're at. Remember, there's a slider at the bottom too, isn't there? Add a property called question index to your question view controller. Oh, I guess we could put it at the top. Um, variable question index equals zero. So we have a variable called question index equal to zero. As the player moves from question to question, you'll need to show the correct stack view and hide the other two. But before you can write code that changes the stack view's visibility, you'll need to create the necessary outlets and actions. The main storyboard and select question view controller, then open the assistant editor to view question controller swift alongside the storyboard. Control drag from the single answer stack view to the definition of the question view controller class. Then release the mouse or the trackpad to view the popover. Verify the connection type is set to outlet, then answer single stack view into the name field connection. Repeat this step two more times and have a range, multiple stack view, range stack view. So again, I'm going to put it, I guess, up here. To do that, I'm going to go to my second view controller. Now, it's kind of hard to choose what you want because they're all over top of each other right here, right? They're all kind of on top of each other here, so that's hard to do it here. So probably the easiest way is here. So, But make sure you get the right one, right? Make sure you get the right one because it just says stack view, it just says stack view, it just says stack view. It doesn't really tell me what's in here. So if I twirl the thing down, oops, if I twirl the thing down, this is the buttons, which is, of course, the single view one. So we know that already. This is the single view one. I'm going to hold the control key down, and I'm going to click and drag over here, make sure it's an outlet, and this is going to be single. Uh, oops, if I spell it right, single, uh, what was it? Single what? Single, single what? Single stack view and spell it right, single stack view. I always spell this wrong. Single stack view. And add that connection. Next, make sure you got the right one. This is, uh, which one is this? This is the switch, which would be multiple one. Hold down the control key, click on that, uh, make it an outlet, and this is multiple. Multiple stack view. And then the last one is this one, which of course is going to be the ranged one. Range, ranged, stack view. So again, I have all three of them making sure they're outlets and then we will show the outlet as they go through the option. Okay, in this case, um, we need to update you need to update the UI so that you can call before displaying each question to the player. You should call this method in the view did load to set the proper interface for the first question. So down here in the view did load, we're just going to put a, a function that says update UI, of course round bracket, round bracket, like that. Uh, update. Now of course it gives you an error message because it doesn't know what it is. So after that you can make a function 
called update UI. And then we can add what we need to that to make it update. What do we need to update? Well, we need to update, uh, make sure everything is true or hidden or so on. At this case, you'll notice, you'll see that it makes everything true at first and then adds. Remember, there's a zero for the question index, right? There's a zero for the question index and so on. So the update UI method is responsible for updating a few key pieces of the interface, including the title in the navigational bar and the visibility of the stack view. You can use the question index property to create a unique title, for example, question four in the navigation item for each question. With the stack views, it's easiest if the, you hide all the three stack views and inspect the type property of the question to determine which stack should be visible. You can use the in question index property to conjunction with the questions collection to access the particular question. Again, hiding them all maybe first is what they said and then showing the one that you want. So in the function update UI, we're going to take and hide each one. Is hidden is true, is hidden is true, is, is hidden is true. Do you see that? So again, we're going to hide them all. Uh, let's close this. Yes. Let's move this over. Let's move this over. Let's move this over so I can write at the same time. So the single stack view. Is hidden. And then stack S-T-A-C-K. I'll just spell stack is T A C K. So we can hide them all. Uh, this is multiple. Multiple. Did I spell that wrong? Oh. Spelling it wrong there. Multiple. Oh, M U L T I P L. Multiple stack view. And then this one is ranged. Ranged. So we got range stack view is hidden, is hidden, is hidden. And then navigational item dot title equals question. Do we give a navigational item title? Do we even make that? I don't remember making that. Maybe we still need to make it. So navigation item, I'm assuming is the title oh, equal question and then of course which one are they doing which is the question index plus one Then they have a current question and making a um, a constant called current question. Which of course would be zero, but you got it's gonna be one at this point. Because you added one to it. So that would be one in this case. That would be question one. So current question would be question one.
Then there's a switch statement, of course, to tell which one should be displayed. And then they use a case. And then we make it visible. Um, oh, you could probably just copy all this right here. So this is making them visible. Say false. Let me pause this. So again, what this is doing is it's displaying the proper um, question, basically. How it's doing it is by keeping um, track of a number. Which number is that? Well, that number is the question index, right? This is, and then of course, current question is question index, which is a number, and then it, it views the one that you have. So, update the buttons and labels. Whoosh, this looks like a lot of work here. So, make sure that we um, take some time to make this right. As you see here, what is this doing? Well, in this case, it's going to connect each of the buttons that you have. The first one here is the label, right? That's the text on the screen at the top of the screen, right? Then you have uh, the single view. Then you have the multiple view. Then you have the ranged view. The easiest way to do this is to do it in the pull-down menu. Don't try and do it on the screen. It'll be too difficult. Again, the easiest way to do this is to do it in the pull-down menu. So let me move my windows around. Again, don't try and do it here. You want to do it over here. And where am I dragging? The interface on your question screen works, but you still need to update the button titles and label text. To make this happen, you'll need to create outlets for the labels and buttons associated with each stack view. In addition to the outlets you create for the stack view, the screen requires 12 outlets for the controls and labels. There are four button outlets in a single answer stack view, four label outlets in the multiple stack view, two label outlets in the range view response stack view. You also have labels that display the question next near the top of the screen and the progression view near the bottom. When you create a large number of outlets, it's important to use concise, easily recognized variable names and keep the variable declaration organized their corresponding stack view outlets. The code below provides an example of a good variable names and outlet organization. Okay, here we go. So in this case, geez, I'm going to move my windows around a little bit to make it easier. I'm going to scroll to the top. I'm assuming we put all these up here, maybe after the outlets. So somewhere in here, I would say. Is that where you think we should put them? What do you guys think? Somewhere up here? How about after we de declare the outlets or before? Because these outlets are for the main stuff. Maybe before or after. What do you think? You think it matters? Probably doesn't. Okay, the label you could drag from the screen probably. The label, you could probably drag it. Again, make sure it says outlet there, and this is going to be label qu question label. Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N, label, L-A-B. 
There you go. And UI label. Do you see it right here? UI label. And weak. What does weak mean? Strong. What's the difference between weak and strong? Weak means it's only inside this, right? I believe and in strong it would be used throughout. I don't know. Let me pause the video here. So now, now mine looks like the example. Again, I dragged each one from over here. Make sure it's the label that you put over there so that you can change the text, right? The label I dragged over there. So yeah, the last one, the whole progress bar. Let's try that. That's the one at the bottom here, progress view. <laughs> to put that on again, we can take the whole bar and drag it on. And um, what, what do they want to call it? Question progress view. Question progress view like that oops capital V question progress view is a UI progress view okay so get to that point I'll pause so in this case we're gonna go all the way down to the update UI which is down here towards the bottom under the view did load right down here where the function is for the update UI is where you need to put this page, this this 224 right here, or 424 right here. And so to do that, let me move my windows around a little bit. Why are we running? What are we running? So again, we need to add some, some, some more consonants. Uh, you got your let question equal questions index right here so we're gonna add underneath there oh, geez. I'm making space here and you'll notice that it's a little bit different here than it is here so maybe I'll, I'll reorder this a little bit this seems to be underneath that do you see that so maybe maybe take this and put it above this Add some more space here. Let's clean this up a little bit here. And let's put this back here. So they have some consonants here. So we have let current answers, answers, which is in the equal current questions, answers. Spell this right. So current answers equals current question dot answers. What did I spell wrong? No, we haven't defined it yet. That's why. So then we have a let total progress bar. Float. So it moves. Question index. I believe that's... Um, float questions dot count doesn't like that forward slash is that where you was giving you an error Amanda, was that where it's giving you an error with the, the forward slash? No. No? With a different piece of code. Mm -hmm. so I'm still yeah, I had an issue with current answers, but I just told, I did what I told you to. So. 
Then it just just be like a outdated thing. Like it, it, it should still work. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me move this up. So this one would be the question label text. This is changing the text to current question. Dot text. And then, of course, the, the, the progress bar. <coughs> Set the progress total progress animate. Animated is animated, yeah, animated. And uh, I mated and animated to true. Did I spell question label wrong? I was always using question. Oh, I used lowercase l here. Dull. Dull. Okay, that's that's a problem. That was a problem. Okay. And what's this one say? Is this answer? And then this one. Anybody? How'd you get rid of the forward slash, Andre? You said that you got that forward slash to work on this one. The token. Okay, let's stop for this.